tutorial, we're going to look at the preview options that we've got at the top of our video preview window. And you'll see up here we've got a whole bunch of buttons. We've looked at this first one, which is setting up our project settings. This second one here will just preview on the external monitor. Now, I've got two monitors attached to my system. You can't see my second monitor, but when I click on my second monitor, click that button, I've got the full size image on the other monitor. However, it's not full quality, but it is on the other monitor. So I'm going to turn that off. I have the option to add video effects just here. And although we've not dealt with effects yet, I'm just going to quickly add one to demonstrate the next feature. So I'm going to click on there. I'm going to choose one that's called Sony Color Corrector. I'm going to select it and click Add. And I'm going to click OK. And I get a box. And if you remember, if you double click on any of these top bars here, it will show you the full size of the box. So double click, there's the full size of the box. And I'm going to hold the control key just so I can move it up the side and it doesn't try and snap so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got a secondary color corrector added to this item. And if I start making silly corrections, so taking the whole thing up to magenta, you can see that's changing the color of the whole item and we're making a really different color, a radically different color by changing these. However, what if I still want to see what the original looked like in comparison? What I've got is a little option here, which allows me, if I click the drop down, I can show the left half or the right half. So if I click left half, I can actually see what the left half is like without the effect and what the right half is like with the effect. And if I want to reset any of these effects, if I just double click what I've moved, it knocks it straight back to the original settings. So if I do actually make a change, so say I increase the saturation, I make it really saturated. You see one side's really saturated, the other side isn't. And you turn it on and off then by clicking on the button, not the drop down, but just click on the button, turns it off, click it back on. And then whatever selection you've made here, so if I click right half, for instance, is what's going to come up when I click that button. OK, so that's what these little bits and pieces are about. If you decide you don't want the effect after all, which I don't actually want, I can actually click this little button here, remove the selected effect and it's gone. And I can actually turn that off. Come back to previews in a minute and just have a little look at this one. Again, you've got the same function of turning it on and off and selecting what you're going to see. And if I click the drop down, you see that you've got a whole bunch of bits and pieces you can add. You can actually look at the individual video channels that make up a particular item. So for instance, we've got a really powerful red here. If I was to choose red as grayscale, you can actually see that it's bright where it's red and everything else is dark. Okay, so that's nice and bright, showing us there's lots of red in that particular channel. And you can actually say, well, what's the red channel? There's the red channel. These these aren't, in my opinion, that useful when you see them as colors. But when you see them as grayscale, you can see what's red, and you can see what's blue, and you can see what's green as well. So those aren't what I use this for, though. What I use these for is this one here called the safe area. And when you click on the safe area, it shows you what's called a title safe and an action safe area for this particular piece of footage. What does that mean? Well, in olden days, we can probably say now, there used to be a fact that people had tube televisions and tube televisions are curved at the edge. So if they're curved at the edge, that means there is a chance of image distortion right at the edge. So if you know you are broadcasting out to TV and some people are still using old tube TVs, then you want to make absolutely sure that your action does not go outside the outer box or else there is a potential that it could be lost, cropped or distorted. And if you have titles which need to be read, we have an inner box which is the title safe area where we make sure that the titles stay within that box so that again they are not cropped, distorted or, or some way unreadable because they've gone too close to the edge of a tube that's that's curved. Now clearly with internet delivery and with flat screen delivery, this isn't the problem that it once was. However, it is still good practice to keep your action and your titles inside these appropriate boxes. However, if you want to break those rules for any reason, they're not set in stone. If you want to have your titles that coming out to the side, forcing people to say what's going on there, that's fine. You can do that. But these are good indicators of what is a good action safe and title safe area. And in actual fact, there are options to even change these. At the moment, they're set at, I think, 20% and 10% of the size so you can change these if you want but we're not going to bother doing those now and you can then toggle them on and off by just clicking the button not the drop down but the button so that toggles them on and off 
So if you actually really do need to see a channel for any reason, you could actually select a channel. And these are closed caption options, which I'm not going to go into. OK, so that's turning on and off your overlays. This is about creating snapshots. Now, you see this one, if I hover over it, it says copy snapshot to clipboard. So you can take a snapshot of an image and have it copied to the clipboard to use elsewhere. Or alternatively, you can create a snapshot of whatever's on the screen and save it as a file. The only thing you need to bear in mind is what quality is it that you're actually taking a snapshot of? And what is the playback quality that we're seeing here? Now, notice we've got a whole bunch of drop downs here. We've got one that says draft, preview, good and best. And this is all to do with how Sony Vegas is going to preview or play back the footage that we put into it. Now, if you look down at the bottom of the panel, you'll see that it says project 1440 by 1080 25i. So it's telling us that it's an HDV clip, 25 frames interlaced. But underneath it says the preview is much smaller. OK, so it's giving me a totally different preview to the actual footage. So I've got a small screen and I'm getting a small preview because that means it plays back quickly. If I try and play it back at full quality all the time, I'm actually using up an awful lot of pixels which are unnecessary. Because bear in mind that this will pretty much fill the whole of my screen anyway if I was playing it back at full quality. And I'm actually looking at it in this really small window. So Sony Vegas give us a whole bunch of options to be able to how we're going to preview it. If your computer is struggling, for example, you're running 4K footage from a from a, a red camera, then you can turn around and say, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to go down to draft and I could even the worst possible quality would be this one down here, quarter. And you can see that looks awful. So if your computer's really struggling, you can reduce the quality. For previews, I generally leave it at auto preview, and it gives me a reasonably good representation of what's going on. But if I really need to see something of very high quality, I could go down to best, and I could click full. And that's really sharpened the image up, as you can see. Now, notice down here that the project settings and the preview settings are exactly the same, but the playback rate might then stutter. It's actually playing that back fine, but for some footage, it might stutter, particularly if you've got bits and pieces that you've added in that include things like text overlays or what have you. So it really can be quite difficult for, for playback when it's at that higher quality. But if you are creating a snapshot, you do want to move it to best full. And then you're taking a snapshot of a single frame. You're not actually trying to play it back. So say when I got to the end of this clip, so let me pull this uh, current time indicator to the end. So there's the end of my clip. OK, so and I'll come back one frame. There you go. That's the last clip. And say I then wanted to do a hold frame. What I could do is I could save this. So if I click save, it says, OK, where do you want to save it? So I'm going to save it to my Sony Vegas file. That's fine. And what do you want to save it as a JPEG or a PNG? Say I'm happy with a PNG, so click PNG and click Save. Now that's saved. So if I now go across to my video bin, it usually takes a moment or two. But if I look over here at my media, has it saved it? I'm going to go down all media. Has it included it? I need to look. Ah, oh, there you go. It says Image 1. I didn't give it a name. I just left it as Image 1. You can see it's a PNG. And if I actually go down to my By Types and go to Stills, there you go. I've actually got Image 1, which I can drag and drop onto the timeline at the end of the other clip. And then what will happen is, at the end, it'll play and then just freeze frame and stay there until I decide I want to fade it out at the end. OK, so that's how you can use the video previews to actually create a snapshot, which you can then use to create a hold frame when you're working with your footage. However, once you've finished, I would advise going back to something that your computer clearly copes with. So you might say, actually, you know what, mine copes with good auto just fine or you want to go to preview auto, whatever your computer works with that's going to work well for you. OK, so I'm actually going to stick mine back at preview auto because that's fine. It works perfectly good for me. So those are the preview options and the overlay options and the split screen options that you have inside the video preview monitor. In the next tutorial, we're going to start actually adding clips to our timeline and creating new tracks and bits and pieces like that. My name's Andrew Davis and thanks for watching.